Hey, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. I was recently mentioned in this video from Nick, which is about refactoring away from enums. I'm gonna show the video, kind of do a little bit of review of parts of it, which show the problem or the proposed problem, what his solution is, and then provide my own alternative solutions to this design, and then really ask the question, are they any better? Or really, is there any point of refactoring away from enums? Before I jump into the review and design around enums, I'd like to thank Event Store for sponsoring this video. Event Store DB is a new category of operational database built for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on Event Store DB, check out the link in the description. Um, the product type being equal to a template or an ebook, what we're doing here is making sure that we can go get a file name that we could go download and save that to. So we're getting like a default file name and then we want to get a download URL. So these are two types of resources that we could be offering. And if we want to be able to do something with them, we need to know if it's going to be an ebook or it's going to be a template because these are. So that's the thing is that a lot of times I think you can kind of get into this mode where people probably seen code like this, where you have these conditional checks on these enums, and then this can grow to say, okay, it's a template ebook. What happens if you add something new that fits this? And as we're likely about to see here, this kind of gets permutated and replicated in many different places. So we're saying, okay, this do stuff. We only want to do something in terms of getting the file name and the download URL. If it's a template, if it's an ebook. There are two types of things that would have these types of characteristics. But if we go into this resources helper, I'm trying to show you this, by the way, because I see code like this all the time where enums are used to do checks like this. If we have this code now, so this is inside of that, we have a similar type of thing, right? So if the offering type is going to be a template or an... So as you'd expect, you go deeper into this where you made that conditional call. And then even inside of that now, there's another call that's calling this get uh, default download file name where it's taking the offering type to make sure, okay, that is a template or an ebook, the same as what was before, and then returning something, otherwise returning null. So kind of the issue at hand here is using enums and having these conditional checks littered everywhere. That really is the crux of the issue is just having these enums and these conditional checks littered in your code base everywhere in multiple places, likely doing the exact same conditional checks. So let's continue on and see what the solution is in the video. Um, what I might do instead is think about separating that out into something else. So I wanna think about my code that's operating on downloadable things, right? Downloadable offerings, instead of just treating it as products everywhere, checking the type of the product, I wanna be able to say, if I have a product, does it have downloadable characteristics about it? And that's the- So I think that's an interesting way of thinking about it. And mentioning here, instead of just thinking, okay, everything's a product and then determining by the type what you wanna do with that type of product is trying to think about, okay, well, I have a downloadable product or there's characteristics that make something downloadable for a given product type. Difference, I think. Instead of saying is the product A, B, C, and then having to come up with all these different variations that we keep tacking on, especially if they're spread throughout the code base, like not a good time. Try to think about, does this product have this characteristic? I think that if you had a separate entity to try and model this kind of downloadable behavior, that could work really well. And I think that it could help us move away from having these enums, at least in this particular case, if everything was focused on downloading, we could pull out that concept and have it as a downloadable resource. But you can see that now this entity that we're talking about, this record, has a download URL and it has a default download file name. These are so the idea here being is that we're gonna create something explicit, this downloadable resource, has this type of record that's gonna be associated to a product. For the, the th and we're gonna use that rather than these conditional statements everywhere. Things that we were trying to codify in the other parts of the code. So the idea here now is that we don't need to go check for different types of product offerings. We can simply go ask, does our product have a downloadable resource associated with it? And that's there's no enum, right? <laughs> this this has nothing to do with an enum. We've effectively moved away from needing an enum for that. And to prove it to you, I want to kind of go through this code example. Like I said, it's going to be very similar. I just added a two onto some of the names here. But 
this do stuff method it used to do some enum checking i said it might be a little bit overkill and i i stand behind and yes so the idea here being is that okay if we have this product handler this new version of it we don't have any enum conditional checks here rather we're using that resource helper directly um, called get downloadable, which now, as we'll see, that's going to be doing getting something else. And we're just passing the product ID rather than the actual, um, the type, that enum. And that I think that could still be overkill, but we've been able to do away with that. So that's not so impressive. But you can see that I have this resources helper where we're getting a downloadable. That means after we ask for that, we should either have one or not. So you can't see the IntelliSense, but this get downloadable, if I jump into it, has a nullable downloadable resource that comes back. So what we're able to do is given our product ID, we could go look up that product and ask to see if it has a downloadable resource associated with it. If it does, and we could check that from the database, right? Or have- uh So that's the important part of this is that we're moving these conditional checks and then we're moving it. So we're in the example of this mentioning, okay, we can go query the database. If there's records there, We'll, or a record there will return it, otherwise we'll return null. So what's really being described as the solution is from moving from compile time and design time to runtime, meaning that we have these conditional checks in code that we've written, and rather what we're doing is now at runtime, we're gonna query a database and get that downloadable resource if it exists, and if not, possibly return null. So there's a big difference here in what we're actually doing. We're moving code and we're actually making an IO call potentially to the database, to actually get that data dynamically at runtime. So is this a good idea or a bad idea? Well, it's a solution. And if it's good or bad, depends on your context. Yeah. If you have, say, a million different products and only a handful of them have downloadable content, then probably not a great idea. Hence, it depends on your context. So this was just one solution. Let's jump into some more that you can think about. So one solution is just using inheritance. We could have this abstract product and we could have different products that kind of represent the product type. So we could have a template, an ebook, an offline course that all extend our underlying product, but we're still doing the same type of thing, which is we have this conditional check saying, okay, if the product is this type of a template or is an ebook or it is an offline course, et cetera, then we actually want to make these relevant calls. So it's not overly different than using an enum. Or we could keep going with this and maybe we decide, okay, we have a product and we're gonna have some virtual methods for get download URL and get the default download file name that we can override. So we end up having our ebook that overrides these values on how they're getting them. Or we could really kind of turn this as a uh, downloadable product and it has these uh, overrides. Now, this really isn't much different than just having the product themselves and the properties that were passed to them as being nullable, or I'm using an option type here. But again, just keep going with different ways that you can keep doing this. And let's keep going. Maybe we have that abstract product uh, class, and then we have our downloadable product, but we're not overriding anything. We're not providing any type of base implementation. Rather, this downloadable product specifically has these methods to it, then in our handler, we're gonna handle this specific downloadable product because we know that it exists. We're not handling kind of this base type. We're being explicit about, okay, here's how we handle specifically a downloadable product. And we also have the option of just going back to using those enums, but just grouping so we don't have that logic everywhere. All I did here was I just created an extension method on offering type. I put all our valid offerings. I represent that it's downloadable. We just return a bool here, and then we can just call that. We can say, okay, if it's allowed downloadable, then here's what you need to do. So, and that would be repeated everywhere, checking if it's downloadable rather than all those different conditions. And as Nick points out in his video, these are really contrived examples. So it's really hard to say what solution is best where, because it really depends on your context. For example, a product may not be a product is kind of the slogan or term that I like to use because if you had some type of Venn diagram where you say, okay, I have two different products, but they're similar just by a tiny bit where there's maybe they have a name and a price, but everything else beyond that, they're very, very different. They're treated different, differently. They have different actions that we can perform with them. They have different kind of these types of characteristics that are very different from them. Maybe in that place, you very explicitly treat them as very different things than trying to go down this road of inheritance and polymorphism. Maybe you don't want to go down that road. Maybe there's a solution like that was kind of described as move things more to runtime because they're more dynamic. Maybe that's a solution that it's better for you. There's a lot of different ways that you can go about this. I think the point of the video though is that 
there's oftentimes this idea of this litter code over and over again and these conditionals everywhere, and that may not be a good solution. So be it, refactor. It could be as simple, as I mentioned, as just creating an extension method for the enums. If you're in a place where it kind of is a little bit of a disaster where you have this repetitive code, you can just refactor that at that point. I appreciate Nick mentioning me in this video. It was interesting to review it, kind of provide my thoughts on what the solution was, different ways of thinking about this. And if you enjoy these types of discussions, you can chat with other software developers by joining my channel. You can get access to a private Discord server where you can interact, ask questions, answers, etc. Check the link in the description on how to join. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.